Are you trying to figure out what the best lens is for your camera? Well, every lens has a purpose, so there is no perfect lens. Although, when it comes to filmmaking, this lens will get you pretty close. Hey everyone, Camber here showing you how to use your camera to make good videos. So if you're new, consider subscribing and also joining my private Facebook group where I can better answer your filmmaking questions. But when it comes to lenses for filmmaking, 24 to 70 is the perfect range for me. And this 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens is on my camera 95% of the time, whether I'm filming a wedding, a short film, or YouTube videos. But this isn't just for Sony. When I was rocking the 5D Mark III before I switched to Sony, I had the Canon 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8 Mark II lens as well. And when I switched to Sony, I continued to use that lens with an adapter until I bought the Sony version. So it's not any particular brand I'm talking about here, but rather the focal range of 24 to 70 millimeters, along with the constant aperture of f2.8 that makes it such a great pair for video work. So let's look at a few reasons why this may be the perfect lens for you as well. But wait, before we start, there's something we really need to be clear on first. When I'm talking about 24 to 70 millimeters, I'm talking about the actual focal length based on a full frame camera, such as the a7 III or the EOS R. But if you have a camera like the a6000 or the T6i, you'll need something like the 16 to 55 f2.8 for Sony or the 17 to 55 f2.8 for Canon to have the equivalent focal length of about 24 to 70 millimeters on those cameras. This is because these cameras have smaller APS-C size sensors. And if you don't know what I mean by equivalent focal length and why that matters, then check out this video I made here explaining the differences in camera sensor sizes in a simple way. And if you have a micro four thirds camera like the GH5, then you'll need something like the 12 to 35 f2.8 lens to get the same equivalent focal length of 24 to 70 millimeters on that camera. And I have all these lenses linked in the description, whether you have Sony, Canon, or Panasonic cameras. But if you do have a different camera, let me know down in the comments and I'll look it up for you. But now let's get back to the video. First off, after years of video work, I found that I most commonly use 24, 35, and 50 millimeters for my videos. Now, everyone's gonna have their favorites, but these are the three that I typically fall back on because they're pretty common for filming. And that's probably why many cinema lens kits have these focal lengths included, but this zoom lens covers those focal lengths perfectly, plus a little extra up to 70 millimeters if I want. And this focal range works great for me, but I have noticed that a lot of vloggers love the 16 to 35 millimeter lens, but I found that 24 millimeters is wide enough for me for vlogging, so I don't see the need to go wider than that in most cases. But let me know how wide of a lens you think you would need and what type of filmmaking you primarily do. But the second reason this is such a great lens is because of the constant aperture zoom, which is critical in filmmaking applications. If you just go buy a cheap zoom like this 55 to 250, that I thought would be awesome before I knew anything about camera lenses, your lowest possible aperture of 4.0 can only be achieved at 55 millimeters. And when you zoom in to 250 millimeters, your lowest aperture will be up at 5.6, which doesn't leave many options for creativity as far as depth of field is concerned. But with this lens, you can stay all the way down at f2.8 throughout the entire zoom range, giving you a nice shallow depth of field cinematic look at any focal length. And you may think, well, there's these 24 to 105 lenses that have an even wider zoom range and still have a constant aperture and they're cheaper. Yes, that's all true, but the minimum aperture is only f4 on these lenses. Now, f4 is plenty to get you a nice looking depth of field, and it's actually what I have my camera set on for these YouTube videos because I don't want a ton of background blur for this application. But what I do want is the ability to make it even blurrier for artistic purposes, and more importantly, I want to be able to go all the way to f2.8 to get in more light for a cleaner image if I need. Because ideally, when you're filming, you'll be able to control the light so that you can have a clean image no matter what aperture you you choose but in reality you can't always control the lighting when you're filming something live like a wedding and then you'll be really glad for that extra stop of light you can get at f2.8 when things start getting darker plus if you decide you need the extra reach you can always invest in a 70 to 200 f2.8 lens and then you'll have the full focal length of 24 to 200 in two lenses while being able to get a nice shallow depth of field using f2.8 throughout the entire range now when it comes to sharpness prime lenses would be ideal because the fewer pieces of glass makes them sharper and you can get as wide as f 1.4 on the good ones however getting those good lenses at each focal length will end up costing way more than one good zoom plus I travel 
a lot and I don't want to be carrying around four lenses in my bag and having to be changing them constantly. It's definitely way easier to have the one good zoom lens on it that I can access quickly and get the shots I need. So what kind of costs are we looking at for a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens? The Sony G Master version costs $2,200, the Canon EF mount for DSLR cameras costs $1,900, and the Canon RF mount for mirrorless cameras cost $2,300. Wait, I know these lenses are really expensive, but before we click off this video, remember that lenses are an investment because you'll probably be upgrading your camera every few years, but if you take care of your lenses, you can continue to use them on all of those future cameras. And with that said, there are some cheaper alternatives to these lenses. The Sigma Art line is fantastic, and you can pick up their 24 to 70 f 2.8 for either the Sony mount or the Canon EF mount for $1,100. There isn't a Canon RF mount version yet, but you can use a lens adapter with the EF mount to make it work on those RF cameras. Now, I bought the Canon and Sony versions of these lenses because at the time, I assumed that them being more expensive automatically made them better. But since then, I've used many lenses in the Sigma art line and they've all been fantastic on image quality. So that covers the full frame cameras, but what if you have an APS-C or Micro Four Thirds camera? Well, on those cameras, that 24 to 70 millimeter range would be equivalent to a 36 to 105 on APS-C cameras and a 48 to 140 millimeters on a Micro Four Thirds camera. So for those Sony APS-C users, you can get this 16 to 55 f 2.8 lens that will be equivalent to a 24 to 82 millimeter lens, and Canon APS-C users can get this 17 to 55 f 2.8, which is equivalent to a 27 to 88 millimeter lens. But if you use this with a Canon mirrorless like the M50, then you'll need to get an adapter. And Panasonic Micro Four Thirds users can get this 12 to 35 f 2.8, which is equivalent to a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. But something important to keep in mind with these APS-C lenses is that if you upgrade to a full frame camera, you won't be able to use these lenses on that camera without there being vignetting around the image because they're designed for smaller sensors. So if you plan on upgrading to a full frame camera, then going with that 24 to 70 suggested above will give you an equivalent of about 36 to 105 on your APS-C camera now. And of course, of course, all of this is based on my filmmaking experience and style and not everyone's going to agree with me, but if you've been watching my channel for a while then you know what my work looks like and it's done almost solely on the 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens because it's the most convenient while still meeting almost all of my needs. So this is definitely a great lens for you to invest in for filmmaking regardless of which camera brand you're using. And if you do have any questions about any of these lenses that are linked in the description or about equivalent focal lengths or anything else like that then feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. But if this video is helpful then please help me out by leaving a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon.